Hi, it's Brian Coble again. I'm Advanced Energy's Director of High Performance Homes, and I'm back for the final video in this three-part insulation installation series. In part one, you saw the layout of the home and all the places that needed to be air sealed and insulated to meet ResNet grade one criteria. In part two, you saw some insulation professionals at work and learned a few tips on how to make your insulation job go quickly, efficiently, but more important, accurately. First and foremost, insulation should never have compression, voids, misalignment, gaps, or wind intrusion. Compression affects the R value of the insulation, and depending on the case, it can either improve or degrade the thermal performance of the envelope. Compressing insulation is fine when the compressed insulation completely fills the cavity or void you're trying to insulate. But compressing that same insulation into a cavity so that it leaves an uninsulated void can result in greater energy loss. Voids are defined as pockets or areas where insulation is missing. Misalignment is when insulation is placed incorrectly and is not in touch with the air barrier, which can lead to a loss of energy through convection. Gaps are spaces between insulation and framing or between pieces of insulation that extend from the interior to the exterior surface of the wall cavity. And wind intrusion is when exterior air enters the building envelope. It often occurs at roof eaves with soffit vents and if the attic insulation at the soffit is left exposed, the wind blowing through the soffit can flow through the exposed insulation and in some cases blow it away from the edge. As a result, wind intrusion can undermine the effectiveness of the insulation and create opportunities for moisture problems. So the insulation has been installed in our house, the drywall is being loaded, so let's go in and take a look. Okay, so I'm starting my insulation walkthrough. One of the first details I come to is this uh, small attic space above the bay window. I want to ensure that since this can't be accessed after gypsum board is up, I want to make sure that they have bats in place and that they are properly installed. And they, they did hit this detail. The installer has bats in place and they are filling the cavity and tight to fit around the framing. Okay, as I continue my walk through, I've come to a you know, window. I'm checking to ensure that it's insulated and air sealed around the frame of the window. And here we have, they've used minimal expansion foam, so it is um, sealed, insulated, and it is complete. And also, I remember from my framing walk that we had two stud corners. Uh, the framer had installed two stud corners so that we could insulate behind them. And I want to make sure that the installer actually hit those. And you can see that the insulation is really cut to fit nicely here. It's uniform and it's also filling that cavity behind this open corner. So that looks great. So I remember this wall from my pre-insulation walk and it was fairly complex. You know, a, a lot of uh, details and obstructions that the installer had to work around. The first is that I, I know this framer uses two stud corners and also laddered tees or whatever it may be to allow the insulation installer to insulate behind their framing. So I want to check to make sure that insulation is in place, and it is. Um, I also know that there is a gas line running vertically here. So I'm just going to pull this insulation back I can see the gas line. I can also see that insulation has been placed to the exterior and to the interior so that the, the stud is uniformly filled with insulation. I have a window frame here. Again, it's well air sealed. And I remember this alarm wire runs horizontal to the wall. So I can easily pull back the insulation. I see the wire. The insulation's been split around the wire and fills the cavity. And I can easily just check to see that that's in place, and it is. Um, I also have an outlet box that's cut tight to fit. And here I have HVAC, the condensate line, and the refrigerant lines coming down. And again, I'm just going to peel back. 
And I can see that my installer placed insulation on the exterior and the interior filling this wall cavity. So that's in place and well done. And then they've also done their air sealing package just before the insulation went in. So they've done caulking of the studs, the top plate, the bottom plate. And looking high, uh, the band has been insulated. We checked that air sealing before the insulation went in to ensure that it was well sealed. And the insulation, again, is tight to fit and uh, tightly fits the framing on all four sides. So, so far so good. This wall looks really good. So I've made it around to the fireplace insert. Uh, really similar to a bathtub. Uh, we have blocking on the back side of this insert that protects the insulation. And so this wall is insulated and it has um, a surface that serves as an air barrier on the inside. Now, at the top of this, we have a cavity here that was capped at the very top. It's been insulated and now it's been capped at the bottom. So again, it creates a six-sided assembly uh, to protect this insulation. So now I'm in the kitchen nook. Um, at the pre-insulation walkthrough, I checked for baffles to ensure that the end of the insulation was protected from air moving through the soffit vents into the attic space. So I know that baffling's in place. Um, the insulation's well installed. It's protected at the end from wind washing. And it's also important that they put bats in at this time since this attic space can't be accessed once the gypsum board has been installed. So the uh, insulation is well installed, it's tight to fit the framing, it will contact the gypsum board once it's installed, and the ends are protected from wind washing. So this is looking good and ready for drywall. So during the pre-insulation walkthrough, I, I noticed this area where we have a bath exhaust going through the band and also a plumbing stack running really close to the band. Uh, we've uh, made sure that it was well air sealed, that uh, bath exhaust. And now I can also see that the insulation's properly installed, it's been cut to fit, and it looks really good. So I'm in uh, this bathroom, and here we have a corner. On the other side of this wall is an exterior unconditioned closet, utility closet. And above it, we have a, a detail here that's similar to a cantilever, where the floor system juts over this unconditioned space. The insulation installer has filled the cavity uniformly. It completely fills the cavity, top to bottom, side to side, and front to back. And now, just to, to make extra sure this doesn't leak to the conditioned space, we'll also block this um, above this exterior wall. So this wall is a garage wall. I'm on the interior of the home. The other side of this wall is the garage and they've used craft facing so that the insulation will stay in place until gypsum's installed, the gypsum board's installed. Um, the important thing to keep in mind when using craft face and trying to meet ResNet's grade one requirements is to face staple the craft so that the insulation completely and uniformly fills the cavity and it's in contact with the gypsum board when it's installed. So I'm on, this, on the second floor for my insulation walkthrough and above my head is the attic platform. And so the attic platform was insulated with fiberglass bats since you'll be unable to access it after the gypsum board's installed. Um, the fiberglass bats are properly installed. They're tight to the framing. They're tight around obstructions uh, like this outlet box. And they will be in contact with the gypsum board. I also want to point out this gasketing material. Now that we're on the second floor, We'll see gasketing around all of the top plates, and that material helps to ensure a tight seal between the drywall and the top plate so that attic air can't make it down into those framing assemblies. So I've made my way around on my insulation walk to the master suite, and we have a couple complex details in the ceiling here. We have a tray ceiling that intersects the mechanical support or mechanical decking in the attic. And our insulation installer has tackled these by insulating both independently. He started by insulating the mechanical deck, and then he moved down and insulated the, the tray. 
So we have a double layer of unfaced fiberglass insulation. Uh, the insulation is uniform, fills the cavity, and it's also cut tight to fit around all obstructions. Okay, I'm here in the master bath. I have a tub and also a shower, a small shower uh, frame out. And so I want to ensure that there's framing in place behind the tub and behind that shower that acts in place of the air barrier. So I've put my hand back behind those, felt the, the barrier. I've also checked under the tub and I can see it. The wall is also uh, properly insulated. Uh, we have a tight fit around the framing and um, it appears to be in great shape. Uh, a couple things I notice in this wall, I have a plumbing stack. And I can see that the insulation's cut to fit around the stack really well. And I want to fill back behind the stack, and I can tell that there's insulation behind it and around it. Um, I also have an outlet box. The outlet box is insulated behind. They've also split around the wire. So this cavity is filled. And we also have horizontal blocking at the bottom of these walls, since it's a nine foot wall and it's cut to fit really tightly around the blocking also. So we're looking at an, a knee wall. So on the back side of this wall is attic space. And it's important to ensure that our insulation is well protected on all sides and it has a backing so that it stays in place and doesn't fall away from the gypsum board into the attic. So here if I pull this insulation back you can see we have a backing in place. It's well installed, it's rigid. Um, I also have a top plate, a bottom plate, two sides, and the gypsum board will provide my sixth surface. And so I have a six-sided assembly that's protecting the insulation. The insulation is cut to fit really well. I have a, an odd angle here, but the insulation's cut to match that angle. So the insulation is well installed and the framing is in place to ensure this wall is well protected and will perform really well. So I'm in the bathroom. Whenever I come to a bathroom, I look for an air barrier that will continue from where the gypsum board will be in place down behind the cavity that this tub forms. And so I've checked the backside of this tub also, but this air barrier does run from above the tub down to the floor. It's insulated behind it. And so now we have an air barrier that will be complete from above the tub down to the floor system. So during the pre-insulation framing walkthrough, I noticed this spot. It's a really short knee wall. So on the other side of this wall is attic space. And it's got a lot of little odd uh, nooks and crannies that the insulation installer really had to slow down and pay attention to what they were doing to get this right. So you can see small pieces here where they've cut to fit, um, a little area here, a small gap that they filled with insulation. Actually, if you pull back this corner, you can also see even the small corner, they've split that bat around that wire in the corner, um, tightly fitting around the outlet box. This is really well done and properly installed. So I'm standing in a bedroom and I'm looking on the back side of an interior bath. And this interior bath does not need to be insulated from an energy efficiency standpoint, but insulating for soundproofing could really benefit whoever's in this bedroom. So I have the mixing valve, I have the tub. If someone's using the shower, you have a lot of residual noise that can impact the person in this bedroom. If I insulate this with soundproofing material, it helps reduce that noise. Thanks to the skill of the installers, there's no question this home insulated with either fiberglass or rock and slag wool bat insulation will meet ResNet Grade 1 insulation criteria. There are lots of other things that go into making a high quality, energy efficient home, but energy efficiency starts with good air sealing and properly installed insulation. Not only will this home be extremely energy efficient, but the homeowners will also have a comfortable and quiet indoor environment. Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or an insulation contractor, I hope these insulating tips will help you to achieve a comfortable and energy-efficient home.